I would like to welcome all our guests to thank them for being in front of us today. And also, as uh, like uh, Senator Lynn, friend and colleague, um, I, I also may have to be away before the end of this uh, to deal with the uh, legislation in the Shannon. Um, so my apologies in advance. Um, I'm going to focus, if I may, on um, the Medical Council's uh, submission for the start, um, uh, Suzanne, if I may. Uh, Please don't think me rude if I interrupt you. I, I need to probe certain things, so I may, you know, and the time is always very limited here. So I suppose you say in your opening that it's important to point out that the Medical Council does not have a position on the topic, and I get that. And nor are you presuming to prescribe what the law should be. I get that. The fact remains, though, that you have removed from your guidelines a very significant um, and important statement, namely that you must not take part in the deliberate killing uh, of a patient. Now, you've told us how it came about in the context of merging paragraphs, but you actually haven't explained where the move to do that came from or why it happened. So could I start by asking you, who asked you to make that change and to remove that particular paragraph? Thank you, Senator. Uh, the project commenced about two and a half years ago. Uh, so this proposed or this work that the committee is doing, which we would very much welcome, uh, was somewhat distant. And so the committee that was doing the drafting work and looking at the feedback that had been received and the submissions received decided to really incorporate and focus on the current legislation or uh, legislation that was coming very soon, like the Assisted Decision Making Capacity mm. Act and mm. the Patient Safety mm. Act. Uh, so at no time did the committee consider uh, assisted dying. So okay. I think it's very important to say We're that. talking about the old council here, right? Yes. Because the new council only came in. So at what point was it proposed to excise those particular words and whose proposal was it? Um, I, I I'm not at liberty to, uh, to attribute individual comments to individual committee members. I think that that's important yeah, this to is state important, that. Though. When, did it, when was it first mooted that this line be got rid of? Um, approximately within the last 12 months while we were doing our Under the old work. council? Um, yes, the committee draws its membership from uh, the old council the new council and from external members which uh, uh, that represent both the So the ethics committee, sorry now this is what yeah. I said I'd have to do. So the ethics committee is working on this. It's the ethics committee of the old council, correct? It's the ethics committee of the old council that began this project about two and a half years ago. Yes, okay. So at what point, so about 12 months ago it is proposed to excise this particular line that you must not participate in the direct killing of a patient. Uh, it now, was, yeah? sorry. It was within the last 12 months. Without, can you be precise? No, I can't. No. Well, what I'm trying to establish is, was it definitely within the period of the old council? Um, yes, it was. Yeah. Okay, so it would have been members of the old ethics committee that would have first considered this? The, the, the ethics committee membership didn't change over the period when the old council changed over to the new council. It was the existing ethics committee. So it's the remained. same personnel who were on the ethics committee of the new council? It's the same membership of the, of the committee that commenced the project two and a half years ago. Okay, so even though there's a new council in place, it's the old committee or the old membership of the committee that was working on this? Yes, because all the committees don't change every time a council changes. Uh, the committees continue to do their work in the background. Right. Uh, there might be some changes in membership, but in general they, they and, stay and, and where did the impetus come for getting rid of uh, this line, and what was the reason given for getting rid of this line? The, re the reason is, is that the council's job is to set standards for doctors. Yeah, uh, I know that, but, but why this line going? It's a big line, it's an important line, it's been there for years. Yes, it has been, and it was felt that it was a little bit out of keeping with our principles-based guidance. We were very keen that it's not a legal code, it's principles-based guidance, and in a sense the committee couldn't understand why it was the only criminal statute that was referred to. Well, it's not a criminal statute, it's, 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 it's the Hippocratic Oath, effectively, um, which is pretty ancient and which has always been part of medical regulation. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why you're saying that it was somehow seen as out of keeping. One would have thought that it was Medical Ethics 101 that you wouldn't participate in the direct killing of a patient. 
It's it's the law of the land. No, a doctor. No, I know it's the law of the yeah. land, but the medical ethics exists independently of the law of the land, or does it? Is medical ethics always, you know, must medical ethics always and never disagree with what is considered permissible under the law of the land, or is it a separate journey that you make? Now, if it wasn't, it was always the law of the land, um, yet all along it was clearly said because a medic who breaks the law of the land. It isn't just of interest to the law of the land, it's also of interest to their medical standing. So you're here setting basic standards for good conduct among doctors. It's always been the case that you say you don't take part in the deliberate killing of a patient. Why is it gone now? Why was it pushed to get rid of it now? If a doctor deliberately takes the life of a patient, then they would face serious criminal sanctions. I know sanctions that, but why is, it of no, why is it no longer of interest to the medical council to make the statement that a doctor must not do that? If a doctor did participate in the deliberate taking of a patient's life, they would also face serious regulatory sanctions as well. And that would How? likely... How? Because it's no longer a breach? Um, because it's a breach, it's, it's a criminal offence, and if a doctor is convicted of a serious criminal offence, they usually will face serious regulatory proceedings as well that would likely result in the loss of their How ability to practice. How widely did you consult with doctors, not generally now about the code, but about the omission of this specific section, which I think it's fair to say has raised eyebrows among a lot of people and among a lot of doctors. Was there any consultation with the generality of medical practitioners before uh, the decision was taken to excise this section? There was no specific consultation related to this issue. Instead, we went out to the public and the profession and all of our stakeholders uh, on a wider consultation piece to do with all of but the But you didn't ask them care. about this? No, we didn't. Surprising, given that this is fairly fundamental change? Uh, it doesn't change the principles-based guidance that we ask doctors to do, which is to balance and be proportionate in how they look at their own ethical code, but also the uh, needs of the patient and mm. the needs of the patient but to access lawful it's treatments. It's fairly clear that we can't draw any conclusions from what you've done about what most medical professionals feel about euthanasia and assisted suicide since you didn't consult with them. Uh, only that it's the view of the ethics committee that the paragraph be removed and that the medical council ratified it. Now you say that the removal of this paragraph uh, was not the medical council taking a stance or paving the way for any future change, that it doesn't diminish the law. But the removal does diminish the profession, doesn't it? I don't feel it diminishes the profession, no. I think our profession is very strong in meeting the needs of patients and putting the needs of patients first. Finally, do you think that students in medical school should be required to study the administration of euthanasia and assisted suicide? I think uh, medical students should study a wide ethical code and principles-based oh, They have to do uh, more practice. than study a code now, they have to learn how to do things. Should they be required to study the administration and to learn the practices of administering euthanasia and assisted suicide? Whilst it is not present in the law of this country, I do not think that that would be relevant to medical practice in Ireland. But clearly the Medical Council has no problem now with a change in the law. I, the Medical Council has no position on the work that this committee is doing or the decision of the people. But it would be seen as convenient by those who would advocate the introduction of euthanasia and assisted suicide if one thing is for sure, the Medical Council won't need to change its guidelines now were the law to change. If there was fundamental change brought in by the people of the country, the Council would go out and engage in wide stakeholder in engagement again. And Haven't you washed your hands of the rights and wrongs of this issue? No, I wouldn't accept that, no. Okay. Thank you.